Welcome back. Well, the madness is officially here. Millions of people are putting the final touches on their brackets right now, hoping that this is the year. 64 teams will compete to win it all, facing off in the national championship on April 4th in New Orleans this year. And there are 9.2 quintillion possible outcomes, if that's not overwhelming. Uh, we did check, by the way. Each year, we agonize over our picks, the upsets, the champion. Every year, we're all wrong right? Even the ones who study it for a living. But maybe the answer is somewhere we haven't looked. It's in the math. My husband loves that. He loves math. He's the math guy. Tim Chartier is also a math guy, math and computer science professor at Davidson College in North Carolina. Joining us live tonight, you have crunched the numbers, sir. Great to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to share some math. I, I'll try to follow along as best I can. I, I went into English. Uh, so how does the final four break down based on your math right now? Right now, we have Gonzaga and Kentucky. Believe it or not, we have Tennessee and Kansas. So that's who our final four are. But some of those are difficult to pick this year. So we'll definitely have some madness in front of us. So how do you go about the calculations? What, what is involved? The way the calculations work is we use uh, linear systems, which people actually learn in middle school. But rather than just having two equations, we have 350. So we use computers to help us. And then we model, for instance, time, where it helps you if you're hot toward the, as the tournament gets close. And we run various models and look for trends. So that's the main way we run it. And I have five Davidson students that have been helping me run the numbers. How successful have you been in the past? Well, we are, we're not perfect, which you pointed out in the beginning. You don't really look for perfection. You just look to be better than other people. And we've had brackets that have beat 97, 99, 99.9% of millions of brackets on ESPN. Now, they don't all do that, but many of them do quite well. All right. That's impressive. Okay, so let's go through uh, some, of the, some of the other calculations you did here, Tim. The weakest number one seed uh, using your math is who this year? We have Baylor actually as the weakest number one seed, which somewhat surprised us given the last year, but that's what our numbers say. Okay, and then we always hear about the bracket busters. We always experience them in our own picks. <laughs> so what are the three very realistic upsets in your predictions right now? Well, we have Loyola Chicago over Ohio State, and that isn't just because of Sister Jean. Then we have Davidson, not because I'm here at Davidson College, but we have multiple models saying Davidson over Michigan State in the first round. And then we actually have Alabama losing to either Notre Dame or Rutgers. It doesn't matter who actually wins that, that first four game. Mm, okay, and I, I'm not sure if I agree on the Ohio State, and you'll see in a moment <laughs> when we look at my bracket. Um, and I did pick Michigan State over Davidson, um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, biggest dark horse, we all love to root for the Cinderella stories. I pick lots of upsets on my bracket as well, and I like to see those teams go far. Uh, what's your pick on that one this year? Well, one of them is actually Tennessee, because Tennessee is one of the dark horses that could actually go the whole way. A lot of them are actually in the South. The South is very competitive. So you could actually choose Arizona, Tennessee, Houston, or Villanova, any of those to go all the way through the South and maybe even to the end. Hmm. So that makes the South very fun to pick. <laughs> That's funny that you say that, Tim, because I took Longwood over Tennessee in the first round, and that's my Cinderella. <laughs> well, I, you can talk a lot of smack at me if, you, if that, that happens. I'll have you back, and we'll discuss that. All right, so which team mathematically is likely to go all the way on your board? Many times it's Gonzaga or Arizona, but given the fact that we have the number three seed doing so well as Tennessee, I'm going to volunteer my choices with the volunteers of Tennessee. Oh, there you go. We've got that on a graphic right here. So we all try to pick the perfect bracket. Even when we use the best math, it's really hard to do. Walk us through some of the odds that you talk to with your students about picking the bracket perfectly and what goes into it. Well, as you pointed out in the beginning, the odds of a perfect bracket are one in nine quintillion. It turns out that that's only if you're flipping a coin. And many of the many of the games, we really do pretty much know who's going to win. So historically, the team people are about seventy percent correct in their bracket predictions. That brings the odds of a perfect bracket down to one in in billions rather than quintillions. So that drops the odds, but it's still very very unlikely. So in fact, no one's ever done it on any of the online tournaments. So the goal is just to do well, not to be perfect. 
Mm. Well, and what I love about this is I, I sent out my bracket to our staff earlier and they all laughed at me. And I said, let the <laughs> madness begin because my husband spends a day and night every waking hour studying this, watching games, preparing for March Madness. I think he went out and bought a new TV yesterday so he could watch an extra game. Um, yet, I can still beat him by watching no basketball, knowing nothing about it. That is what is so great about this, is even those who, who think they know don't really know. <laughs> that's, that's very much the case. And even us in math, we will never predict the randomness <laughs> and the human spirit. Ah, the English major wins on this one. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at my bracket real, real, real quick, Tim, and you can make fun of me like the rest of our staff. So um, having lived in Columbus for a lot of years, I took Ohio State uh, to win it all, beating North Carolina. Ooh. Some of the other interesting choices I probably made, of course, was Longwood beating Tennessee. I took Creighton to the Final Four. Um, I did take Baylor a little bit until UNC beats them. Gonzaga, of course, is a big one for me. Um, what do you think of my pick? I think we definitely definitely need the odds to ever be in your favor. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, Longwood all the way. Longwood all the way. Uh, Tim, thank you so much. I also understand it is your birthday, and you have chosen to spend oh. it with us. So happy birthday, my friend. Thank you very much. I'm going home for cake, and everyone at home is watching you and me right now. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Thank you for watching. Thank you for giving us um, some bracketology uh, oh. lessons. I hope that all of our brackets don't bust. Uh, Tim, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.